welcome back to the charismatic voice. Today, by popular demand from YouTube comments, we are going to be bringing back artist Aurora and listening for the first time, for me anyhow, to It Happened Quiet. Now, I did a little bit of research on the song and I found out it was co-written by Aurora and Sacha Skrybeck, which is particularly interesting because Sacha has co-written on things like Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus and Without You by Lana Del Rey. So I'm, I'm curious what this is going to sound like. Also, I did look at the lyrics ahead of time. They are profound and uh, very, uh, very vivid. So I understand that this is about a complicated relationship and Aurora wanted it to be interpreted uh, in different ways by different people. So uh, we're definitely going to talk about those lyrics some. This is going to be taken from a live performance in 2019. Let's get to it. This is, uh, this is so dark in the message, but delivered in a slightly detached and simple way. Uh, not detached in a bad way, just um, it, it feels like it's delivered by a person who isn't necessarily on the floor bawling, but somebody who's had to actually remove their emotions from the situation so that they can talk about it, which is even more heartbreaking. Aurora's voice is still dripping with expression. Uh, I really, there is so much to digest in that first bit. Um, let's go back and listen to it again. Wow. Okay, a couple of things about her voice that I'm, I love that she's doing. First of all, it's just so expressive, but um, it is very intentionally expressive too. And she really loves to play with her voice. So you can hear this in the way she ends phrases. Sometimes she'll slide off of them or just stick them right out. Um, there was a moment when she even did almost like a little pitch bend, so like almost like a quicker slide at the end. And she also uses her hands to paint images and make them more vivid. Uh, and it it's almost not just the word images, but it sounds like how she wants to express her voice. Um, it definitely has some other things that she's doing with her hands too, but every now and then I'll see her do something that looks like the air is moving faster where um, she cut herself off really quickly on one moment and the hands accentuated that for us both visually as well as aiding her probably to make that a really sharp cut off. Hmm, it's just fantastic, let's keep going. Words falling off through the window Oh, that remains is a silent call is the Flower on the meadow. Oh, love is 
Ooh, um, uh, before uh, we get too much further into this, it's kind of hard to stop the song uh, the way it, it streams on. I love that they've got just voice and guitar, and it sounds like a uh, guitar player, I think her name is Sylvia, I think, um, is going to do some harmony with Aurora here now, I think. Um, I think that was just them. It might have been Aurora layering. We'll find out in just a bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about these words and why at one point my eyes just felt an instant watering. Uh, let's see. What were the words here? Oh, yeah. Words falling out through the window. All that remains is a silent call. When she got to, is the earth colored red? Her voice had this. Uh, transparency, tenderness, it, like it, um, it was head voice for sure, but she actually made the sound more fragile. Like she's barely on the edge of her chords, just air barely going through it. And, ah, oh, wow. I don't, it really got me. The fragileness in the sound is the earth colored red, right? That obviously is speaking of some violence and as I land like a flower on the meadow. So it really sounds like, um, well, it sounds like a really terrible situation, honestly. And then when they got to love is wild, uh, again, it has that, she, I think she kept that same airy tone there. Uh, and the guitar rooted in a minor key. This is uh, really important to me because often love is wild is, uh, is a positive thing or it's uh, portrayed as being positive and they'll be like, yeah, man, love is wild. We want to get lost in the wildness of it. But it sounds like the wildness of the love in this situation resulted in pain. And, uh, and she's coming back to this word and the way it's imbued with pain um, and latching onto that is probably never wanting to have a wild love kind of situation again. Oh, Okay, we're gonna go back to that. That was an amazing moment. Let's go here. Let's go back. Here. A little more. a really great uh, line in there. And you fell apart like a stone can be broken into sand. Uh, that I love that line. It speaks for itself. I just, wow, that hit me. Um, I love the harmony here and the way that these two voices go together. They both bring this fragileness to it. Um, I think Celia is singing above Aurora here. So this higher harmony and it, it really, um, uh, it's gorgeous. The fragility of both of their voices in their upper register without putting a lot of power into the upper register, just letting it float almost like it's ethereal. Beautiful. And you can't remember that day, but you know it happened quiet, so quiet. Oh, whoa. Uh, the, the body language of Aurora here is, uh, very strong. Uh, that, wow. Uh, so when she seemed to remember whatever this was taken from, uh, whatever moment in life, uh, or perhaps also imagine it, there's different ways a person can connect to a song, but this moment when she connected really clearly to it, she actually gave a little shake. Um, which is sort of a way to sort of uh, shake off 
could be shaking off trauma, definitely shaking off a memory of something. And then she started bouncing, which is often body language that people will do to um, comfort themselves. So uh, watch that here. And you can't remember that day, but you know it happened quiet. Wow. So quiet. Words falling out through the window. All that remains is a silent call. Is the earth calling red as I land like a fly? Uh, I love the way that the guitar paused there for a bit and this, uh, just this ooh vowel ooh can often be something to draw people in. Ooh is all, also often associated with mourning or, or loss uh, or soothing, but it tends to be a very inner kind of vowel. Uh, beautiful shaped ooh there as well. Um, I loved the guitar dropping out, but then it also sounds like we had a uh, a harmony that jumped in on top of this beautiful beautiful let's go back uh, and catch that moment again if we can it's haunting Um, this line that they sang together uh, a, a few times, are your dreams as dead as they seem? It speaks for itself, just incredibly powerful. I wanted to um, say that in case um, you all didn't catch that. Wow, that's a great line. Uh, I love the way that they are harmonizing here. It reminds me of the flower duet from Lakme, the way that you have two voices that are high. You don't hear this kind of thing in modern music very much. This is really gorgeous. Um, I love the way that they brought this into the song. It feels like this incredible combination of different genres. I love, love, love it. Had so much emotion in it too. Okay, gonna go back a little bit. Let's catch that again. Oh, here. Yeah, there's it was. Nice blend. I are dreams as dead as they seem. I are dreams as dead as they seem. Don't you speak over my voice. I will return from the shadows. That a uh, great example of using a fuller chest voice uh, belt. It's not really like, it's not super loud like a lot of belting, but it is inner chest voice um, to color things versus head voice to color things. Chest is often a more powerful sound. And there are times in the song when I think Aurora wants to sound more powerful versus more fragile. Uh, so the words there where it sounded like she went into chest were, don't you speak over my voice. I will return from the shadows. And then 
uh, it gets much more vulnerable and she goes into her head voice when she sings, and I'll bleed in your bed, turn it red like the ground outside your window. Right? Uh, she uses those registers very effectively here. Let's go back, maybe here. A little further. Don't you speak over my voice. I will return from the shadows and I bleed in your bed. Turn it red like the ground outside. Definitely seems like uh, Aurora feels that feeling of getting lost in love, um, and perhaps not in the best way. And uh, Celia here, I like the way she's taken the harmony lower um, and is a balance. It's just a, a very careful balance to Aurora's voice. It's quiet, it's subtle, but it's lower and starting to gra uh, ground both of the voices down, probably because we're coming to an end soon. Yeah, very soon. Oh, love is wild. Love is wild. Love is That song felt disturbing in many ways. Obviously, it was a great vocal performance delivery uh, from both of the women. I actually didn't expect to hear another woman I knew um, from prep work that there was someone on guitar, but very, very fantastic to hear them together in this Lachme-esque harmonies. But wow, the material of the song and the presentation of it was much darker and more disturbing than I had anticipated. Definitely talking about how the way that love can get wild and out of hand is not always good. And uh, wow, they really captured something important in this song. It was impressive. Uh, the build of it was really great and the way that they grounded that at the end. But most fascinating to me was the way that they set lyrics that... Um, that could have had happier moments. It it was all set in minor moments, um, which related a story that was much more clear and and dark. Like I said, uh, whew, uh, thank you to all of you for recommending this. I loved getting to see them in this recording situation. It was great to see Aurora and the way that she doesn't let anything about herself get in the way of delivering her message. I think it is so impressive to see her. She is one of the most authentic and original artists that I've seen these days. And I really appreciate how much she is doing for music and creativity. It's beautiful. So thank you so much for recommending her and this song uh, and also this selected video. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great example. Uh, if you want to keep making recommendations, please put them in comments down below in the comment section of this video. And if you want to come and say hello to me, you can find me here on YouTube on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. You can find me at a 250k party here coming soon. Or you can also find me on Patreon or at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you guys somewhere soon.